All right, Dale, let's, let's talk about a couple of uh, the winter annual grasses now planted in the spring. It's, it's not necessarily what you would do as a general practice. And, you know, a lot of times in these plots, we, we want to put some things out here that don't necessarily work uh, to just show and kind of remind ourselves why we don't always do it. But at the same time, we learn, we always learn some things. Sometimes and maybe you find something that Yeah, some, that some works. different applications. So we've got uh, two of the most popular fall planted uh, cereal grains here. We've got Elbon Rye over here, and we've got our 813 uh, Winter Triticale here. And, you know, these don't look very good, and, and that's kind of to be expected because these are winter annual cereals planted in the spring. They didn't fertilize, and so we wouldn't expect a tremendous amount of growth, which, which is what we're seeing. Uh, I'll talk about the Elbon just a little bit here first. So, as a general rule, it, it hasn't really headed out. There's there's a few of these, and Elbon will always shoot a few heads out. Uh, it, it, it's a very tough crop. It always survives. It's always going to put a few head seed heads out. But for the most part, it's growing somewhat prostrate. Uh, hasn't really uh, uh, shot the you know shot up and headed out, and that's what we would expect. And so I wouldn't really be putting these in if I was looking at maximizing my forage. But if all I wanted to do was control weeds and didn't want to have a lot of stuff out there to terminate, yep. yeah, it might not be a bad thing yep. uh, to plant out there in the spring because you know I don't have as it hasn't used as much moisture because it's not as big as as like the oats and some of the stuff we'll look at later. Uh, but but yeah, I've got some pretty decent weed control. Now now the A13 is definitely taller than the Elbon, and the reason for that is is because A13 is partially facultative. And when we use the word facultative, what that means is uh, it can act as a winter triticale, which is what it mainly is, but it can also act somewhat like a spring triticale. Uh, it's not fully facultative like the surge is that we'll look at later. Uh, surge is fully facultative. It can go either way. Uh, but, but we are seeing more growth on this than what we would see with a, a true blue winter type triticale. And if you look at the rye, um, you know, it's, it's a winter crop, the most winter hardy crop we grow. And you say, why would you plant that in the spring? If you look at that, if your goal, if you have one goal, and that's to provide pigweed control, that looks great. I mean, that that's a very dense canopy. Um, you can put it something like that together really cheap and uh, create a mulch that didn't use a lot of moisture. Um, you know, this year it was very difficult to get anything planted in the fall. Um, you say, oh no, I'm out of my weed control plans. No, you can still plant rye in the spring. Uh, it makes a very, uh, I mean, it looks like a turtle. Yeah. And, and, and spray it down and plant soybeans yeah. into that. You've still got your weed control potential. Yeah. So you just have to have realistic expectations. Don't plant that in March and think that you can graze it. No. Plant it in March thinking that you can control some weeds and then and then spray it out uh, and move on. Yeah, still has some utility.